This week, we're going to be talking about the week of April 17th through the 23rd. It's going to be the new moon in Aries, part two, the sun in Taurus, and Mercury retrograde. Me and Scott are digging into some questions, and we're reflecting on our three-year anniversary of the podcast, which we missed just like we missed the last anniversary. <laughs> um and then we have Saturn in Pisces is going to be forming a long aspect to the North Node in Taurus, creating an undertone of healing and elevating our self-worth. The second new moon in Aries for 2023 helps us reestablish self-love and confidence by encouraging us to be authentic. The sun is beginning its transit in Taurus, solidifying our values, such as Mercury begins its retrograde transit in the sign of the bull. Be mindful and patient with financial movements and instead hone in on what is truly necessary for your material well-being. Stay tuned. The Weekly Transit. Astrology is a language that communicates how the planets and stars influence life on Earth. I'm Scott Tajarian. I'm an interpreter of this language. Join me and my co-host, Ingrid Iverson, who helps bring an even more practical look at this astral language. The Weekly Transit is here to bring clarity to the chaos so you can ride the planetary waves instead of the planets riding you. The Weekly Transit. Hello, everyone. Good morning, Scott. Hi, Ingrid. Good, good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's morning for you. You just woke up. Yeah. It's five in the evening, and Ingrid no. just no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like noonish, a, a little later than noon. High noon. Yeah. <laughs> um, the sun is in the tenth house. <laughs> really. It's, uh, it's oh yeah. Gosh. Where is the sun right now in this moment? It's as we're recording. The sun is, the sun is in the ninth house. So it's already crossed over into the latter half. It's not morning anymore because the sun is crossed over from the tenth house to the ninth house, and now it's beginning its fall. It's not okay. rising anymore. I have a. I have a good question. We're going to okay. get to our listener questions in just a second, but this made me think of people always say there's like a, uh, you're either a morning person or a night person. There's all these terms for when people think you should wake up and when you should be productive. Like there's like bear, I don't know. There's like animal correlations to like what kind of person you are and how mm -hmm. you function best. Is there that in astrology when you were just saying like the, where the sun is to, like compared to our charts in this day, like, is there a certain time I should be getting up or a certain time I, don't know, time I should be I don't know. That's a good productive? question. I don't know. That's a good question. People ask me that sometimes. Like if I was born with the sun in the fourth house, does that mean I'm more of a night person? And I don't know. I honestly, in, in my experience, I, I don't really experience I don't, I don't see those correlations. So at the same time, I think of myself, I'm a seventh house son and I definitely like the end of the day. So I think it's up to each person to, to really understand. It's not for me to tell somebody that it's like, you're a fourth house son. Me? So are you, I don't are you know. a th third house son? Now I'm, now I'm, I mean, I think part of it's just, Ingrid. listening to yourself yeah you're a fourth house son so that means that the son you know you were born at night you were born you were born at midnight 1204 a.m mm -hmm. so maybe that's why you're a night owl well i'm I mean, I would say I'm not really a night owl, though. I just happen to work nights, but I prefer, yeah. I think I do best when I actually go to bed early and get up early, which is also hard. It's hard for me to do that for myself. But like when my guy's around, he's like, okay, it's time for bed. Mm -hmm. You like tuck me and he's like, okay, it's, it's time for you to go to bed. I'm like, okay. But then like I wait, like, and he wakes up early too. And I feel like I have such a better, more productive day. Even the other week we did like a eight o'clock in the morning thing and 
I swear only because he was here and he's like, you have to get up and get ready. I was like, I'll just open my eyes and record. It's fine. I can't do this. And then mm -hmm. I got up, took a shower, got ready and at like seven in the morning. And I was like, oh, wow, this day is amazing. I'm having the longest, most productive day. Yeah. But I feel like my, I think maybe especially just because of the nights, it makes it kind of hard for me to reacclimate Re myself to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Anyways, I just so. thought that was a fun little, I mean, but also yeah. sometimes astrology, a lot of the time is just a confirmation of what you already know about yourself which is my sister had a reading and she was like this is crazy because i feel like you just told me all these things i know about myself that i wasn't even listening to myself about like fighting my yes. own self or thinking things should be a different way yes. and she also said it helped her um realize that everybody's different like my parents are not me my my fiance is not me like why am i expecting them to all be like me i have this expectation that everyone should be like me and it makes me mm -hmm. mad <laughs> yes so exactly. it was uh i think just sometimes astrology can yeah confirm confirm what is already existing and sometimes we're just fighting our own reality or trying to put ourselves in another box that's not us and instead of accepting ourselves for who we are that's the whole point Which you know i mean such I, a great i <laughs> love it Yes, I love that she had those reflections. I mean, that's that's the whole point of astrology is I can't tell you how many times people have told me when I do a reading for them, it's like, wow, you know me. You don't <laughs> yeah. know me, but you're you are you are you're saying things about me that are me, and it's it's exactly me, and and that's me to a T. And uh, you know, I don't feel crazy now because yeah. you're explaining why I am the way they am or or and also in relation to other people and understanding that the people that you're close to in your life, why are they doing things different than you? Because they're you're, not you. What? Because they're not you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like the advice that you give other people is the advice that you really want to be giving yourself. A hundred percent. God, that was like so annoying. Your, your sister <laughs> was like, you know, but my mom doesn't have any goals and this and that. And I'm like, but she's not supposed to, you know, because of all these different things in her chart. And so, and it just, it made sense to her. So yeah, it's, that's, that's the whole point of astrology is to help you understand who you are so that you can accept who you are. And once you're accepting who you are, then you can appreciate yourself and once you're appreciating yourself, then you're loving yourself. And when you're loving yourself, that's the one job that you're that you have to do in this life is to learn to love yourself, which is a really hard job, which is why it's really the only job that you're meant to be doing in this life is <laughs> to is learn hard. to love it's yourself. So hard. Yeah. I mean, okay, so I think it was a couple weeks ago now, possibly, but uh I was sharing about getting irritated with this girl at work and then when I did you get the back, outfit no I don't she's she hasn't looked at me since thank god oh my god really okay um, <laughs> uh but when I edited that episode I was like oh my god I hate hearing myself so irritated and like mm -hmm. agitated I really didn't like seeing that version of myself mm -hmm. and I just felt a little icky about putting it out. I was like, maybe I can take part of it out. And I was just like, well, that doesn't make any sense because we reference it and the whole episode. Mm -hmm. And also I felt like, you know, in the end, I think you really helped me process real time what was happening inside me, how to relate it to my astrological code and how to kind of take the lesson that was there for me. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was really important. So I was like, well, I guess I just have to keep it in, even though I don't really like seeing myself this way. I still just felt a little weird about putting it out because I just felt icky about myself mm. and, and you know, letting people see that part of myself that was so worked up. And then, of course, like all like every time this happens where I feel like nervous about something I've shared, I had so many confirming messages talking about the intro about me being pissed off and about something they were pissed off about or just feeling like a human being. And I was just like, fuck one of the women i forget her name someone wrote me on youtube um a really just oh, sweet donna. message yeah donna. i like it just made me start crying because i was really like not feeling good about myself in that moment and mm. she just made me feel like oh like it's okay to be angry and that's normal so other you know it's okay to let other people see that you, you have been upset yes and 
now I forgot yes. why I just shared this, but <laughs> somehow it related well, to what we're I, talking I about. think I think it I think you're sharing it because it has to do with accepting yourself. Yes, yes. And yes. appreciating yourself. And I want to celebrate you, Ingrid, for oh. you know, having the courage to really be raw and authentic on this show and and just you know you're you're very courageous in just showing up who you are in whatever emotions you're feeling and and being open to me helping you navigate uh the the challenges that that you're facing and so you know i feel like it makes me look good <laughs> cuz i'm like <laughs> because <laughs> you know i'm here like helping you see and understand yourself and why you are this way you're having these experiences and and this is what i do with my clients is yeah. help guide them through the rocky moments of their life i mean when i'm having a shit a real shit moment scott is definitely like my go-to guy who can I mean, I feel like you're just so good at holding space and, and being compassionate, but also telling me when I'm not seeing what's there in front of me and how I can maybe look at it different in a way that for me that I can hear. Because sometimes when someone tells you like something you don't want to hear in that moment, you're like, well, fuck you. You don't understand because I'm mad. And it's, I think we have whatever chemistry we have and your approach and using astro you know, using astrology to open those doors of our mind really helps me to be able to process things and be open to suggestion because yeah, in times of feeling like super discomfort, sometimes you don't want to hear something other than what you're experiencing. Yes. It's not it's not fun to entertain any other thought except for that I'm pissed totally. off and I want to like hold on to that anger because it feels good in that moment to like have it. <laughs> totally. Well I mean but that's the that's the magic or the joy of astrology because astrology helps illuminate your blind spots and reframe your perspective. And that's my whole purpose as an astrologer in working with the clients that I do, especially like with the cosmic pathway where I'm meeting with a client every single week, the same client. That I mean, that's basically is, that's basically me and you, but exactly. on the podcast. So if yes. anyone's wondering. Yes. <laughs> about what it's how, like that's that's what it is yeah yeah sharing all your shit all your stored up shit and then getting the mm -hmm. astrological perspective and guidance on how to how not be a raging bitch all the time <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i loved about what you were saying that like because we were texting about this after that episode and you're like so i guess it's okay to be angry and it's like uh yeah it's okay to be angry that's a normal human emotion and I think especially in the healing community though it's like you're supposed to be a certain way all the time it's like mm -hmm. this image of like perfection that's so ridiculous and stupid and i feel like a lot of people wrote in were like oh like there's anger can be healthy if you're listening to it and creating boundaries and there's you know we're not listening to ourselves when we get mad something is happening where we're being violated and we need to stick up for ourselves well and especially I think, yeah Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just gonna say i think that sometimes especially in the instagram perfect world it's like oh you're supposed to always be able to say and do the right thing in the right moment and it's like you know what i'm gonna get pissed off because i'm not always gonna do the right thing mm -hmm. for myself because i'm still learning about myself and i'm always gonna yeah. be learning about myself and i'm sure i'm gonna get pissed off again and it's gonna exactly. happen exactly yes it's an it's a normal human emotion and the more that you avoid it when you're feeling it mm -hmm. the more it festers and the uglier it becomes when you find when it does finally erupt and and there could have been a lot of that during this period because you know we're oh, in the midst of aries season this is when this is the week where the sun moves from aries to taurus but this is i imagine churned up a lot for people and people's tops have been blowing off if they have been repressing what they are truly feeling on an authentic level i mean i i, I have two examples they're not my personal examples but mm -hmm. one something 
happened at the club some sort of misunderstanding there was like a fist fight between like the security guys and some customer who was just having a fit because he didn't want to be told what to do he didn't want to like accommodate you know people's per- like space he was like in the walkway and he didn't want to be told that he needed to move like it just nothing even happened he just you know he obviously had some repressed shit and like for mm-hmm. some reason that was his last straw that someone said can you move out of the walkway mm-hmm. and that was very explosive and then a friend of mine and her long-term partner are separating oh my god you know very intense but i mean the root of it was incompatibility Mm -hmm. although they're very like respectful and they get along and everything like just deep incompatibility and kind of sweeping it under the rug for years and years to to try to make it work and they've you know they arranged every sort of um like little cheat or like accommodation to make it work they're like well we could still make this work we can still make it work if we do this if we do that if we try this Mm -hmm. and i think they have a great communication because i think they've tried everything and she was like what do you think like am I overreacting? Like, what, what should I do? And I'm like, I think you guys are doing the right thing because you know, you're, you're taking out all the shit that you've been kind of trying to like put little band-aids on everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it was a bit of, uh, I felt like out of nowhere, but you know, from the outside in, it was like a lot of repressed stuff has now come out into light and you have to mm-hmm. deal with it at some point. And it's important. I think that, I think long-term it'll be better for both of their their ha- their overall happiness even though it's very uncomfortable in this in this time but yeah good it really made me think a lot about the things we do to try to keep whatever little comforts and uh routines and people in our lives that maybe aren't quite fitting mm-hmm. but yeah and that's what this aries season does is it blows it up if it doesn't fit if it's not real mm-hmm it's um, about reconnecting to who you are. Before I it yeah. feels like I kind of want to transition into the week, but I know we have some questions. I- yeah, but even before we do that, I wanted to bring up one thing because I don't think we mentioned this a couple weeks ago when maybe we should have. Okay. And and you and I, um, <laughs> I guess we're not really big on milestones or anything. Because, oh no! What have we like, missed? Just, we missed like, our three the, year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two weeks ago was our three year anniversary of the of the podcast. Yet. And so we're two weeks behind, just like we were two weeks behind of our 150th episode or or three weeks behind, whatever it was. But yeah, so we've we've been doing this podcast for three years now. So congratulations, Ingrid. Thank you. Yes, congratulations, Scott. <laughs> congratulations, me. Thank you, yes. thank you, thank you to everyone that continues to listen yes. and share. Thank and you to our us. listeners. Wow. Sending us really just kind messages that really make us feel like we're part of the community, which Mm -hmm. for me feels huge. I, otherwise I'm just, I'm sitting here talking with you, which is amazing. I mean, I get so much out of this without anybody, but knowing that it's actually like helping people learn astrology, learn about themselves, not feel like total idiots. Cause that's sometimes how I feel over here by myself. And then you guys Mm -hmm. tell me I'm not insane. So (laughs) It's just been a really fun transformation and this is I mean our lives are just completely different from yes meeting here every week for yeah, yeah 3 years now. Amazing. I can't I can't even believe that. I'm just actually just like wait 3 years. Yeah. I was just thinking I basically been at the club for about 3 years also and I was like damn that's a long time. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the longest times I've been doing anything. Like the, usually my jobs are about I've stayed at them for like 5 years. I'm like that's almost like 5 years. That's like a significant portion totally of life it's amazing it's i'm so grateful for you ingrid and i'm so grateful for all of our listeners i mean we obviously probably wouldn't be doing this for three years if no one was listening but i mean so many people are listening and more and more people are listening and thank you for listening thank you for sharing it with your friends thank you for reaching out to me for readings for the moon classes. Thank you for reaching out and just saying hi and your gratitude. I mean, I just, I feel like, I I just think about myself sometimes. I'm like, how many people in the world get messages on like pretty much almost a daily basis? I get messages from people saying thank you that I don't know. And I'm just so grateful for that. It's, it's so amazing to 
receive so much gratitude from so many people from all over the world. I mean, I have people that I've never even met that I have like these online relationships with because they're so supportive and they're, you know, we have conversations about these things with people I've never met. Ricky, I'm like, mm -hmm. I feel like I know her. Janine, <laughs> there's another yeah. woman that writes all the time. Your Virgo sisters. Like, oh my God. Yay. Thank you, Virgo <laughs> sisters for hanging out with us. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's been, it's been a journey. I'm feeling good about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm excited. Loving it. So just wanted to mention that. Um, should we, before we get into the questions, do you want to thank the, thank the, well, all of our listeners, but the, the ones who are supporting the podcast, the, the sponsors, the ones who are sponsoring the podcast. Yes, yes absolutely. I want to thank Jessica, Kendra, Larry, Jasmine, Brenna, Barbara, Grace, Janelle, Vincent and Michelle, Clarissa, Nicole, Aline, Cassie, Merdinas, Brooke, Ricky, Amaranth, Libby, Annie, Amber, Stephanie, Deborah, Haley, Janine, Carrie, and Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for supporting the podcast. Um, it allows us to spend more time doing what we love, sharing the planets and stars with you. And if you'd like to also support the podcast, you can go to the show notes. There is a link to donate. So you can donate $1, $5, or $10 a month. Or you can, what can you do? You can, you can share uh, the podcast. You can rate us five stars. You can uh, share the podcast on your social media, share the podcast in your real life. You can write a review for the podcast or write a review for the basics of astrology on Amazon. You, you can, can buy the, you the can buy the book, The Basics of Astrology. You can smash that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, I mean, those are... Yeah, all of those things really do totally. help us. All the of things. Exactly. And if you want to get deeper with understanding the language of the planets and stars and how they've affected you directly. You can contact me for a reading at theweeklytransit.com. I will never solicit you via social media. So just go directly to theweeklytransit.com to schedule your reading with me or enroll in the moon cycle classes. Yes. Love to work with you. And then if you are new to the podcast, the way to get the most out of the podcast is to one buy the basics of astrology it's the book that we put together it is on amazon you can google i mean it's in the show notes you'll be mm -hmm. able to find it um yeah. it's 30 dollars. scott drew all of the symbols that are in there it's a glossary of all the just the the signs and symbols that we talk about on here if you're watching on youtube or on spotify you'll be able to see those symbols but it's a translation of those to follow along with and then going to the website, theweeklytransit.com, pulling up the forecast, it gives you notes of what's happening each day along with the signs and symbols as well that kind of flash across the screen if you want to sit with them and follow along a little more. That's the little cheat. Um, <laughs> and then there's also in the show notes, time markers. If you want to skip ahead, if you're bored of the intro, or if you want to go back in time, when I'm having a really good day or a bad day, I like to go re-listen to that day of the week. You can just click Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It will go right to that day. Yes. That's the thing that I personally use the, the most. <laughs> Everyone's like, what's happening today? I was like, I can't remember. We're talking. There's so much astrology happening all the time, but I, I'll go back and listen to a day. I love it. Um, okay. I'm going to get into the questions. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then also the basic of the basics of astrology. We have the book in Spellbound Sky, which is our favorite metaphysical crystal shop in LA. It's in Silver Lake right across from Erewhon. If you haven't been, you should go go buy the book and go support their amazing shop. It's yes. also in the Crystal Shrine in North Hollywood. Yes. So if you want to go see it in person before you buy it. Yeah. Um, and then moving on to the questions we have. The daughter of Earth. She wants Whoa. help. <laughs> That's the a daughter name. of Earth needs help. Well, here I am. <laughs> Let's um, do it. <laughs> she needs help surviving a personal transit. Oh, Pluto, boy. <laughs> Pluto is opposing her moon in Cancer at 29 degrees. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, uh, again, we're we're late to help here because <laughs> the Pluto's at uh, zero degrees in Aquarius now. But it will be coming back to... 
29 degrees in Capricorn, opposing the daughter of Earth's moon, her moon, at uh, 29 degrees in Cancer. So Pluto is the god of death, lord of the underworld, the planet of transformation. The moon represents the home, your roots, your upbringing, your childhood, the ones who raised and nurtured you, and your ancestors. So if the planet of transformation is opposing the planet that rules the home, your roots, you're going through some sort of transformation to your home life, which is causing you to reflect on your past your roots, your upbringing, your childhood, the ones who raised and nurtured you and your ancestors, and transform your reflection, your experience of the past, so that you can be in greater authority of yourself in your present life. Because Pluto, at the time of this question, in Capricorn. Capricorn is a sign that represents authority. Now it's in Aquarius. She's probably still feeling it because it's just a degree away from her moon, but Pluto will be back at 29 degrees on July on June 11th. So it's still got more work in Capricorn this year and next year before it fully transits completely into Aquarius for good for the next 20 years, uh, the end of 2024. Um, so I'm thinking of maybe what kind of advice could make this less uncomfortable is just reminding ourselves that the death of the old way is uncomfortable and it's totally normal and maybe writing a list of the things that you want to let go of. That's such a Virgo, uh, <laughs> you know, I would say that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would say, you know, it depends on what her North node is, you know, and, you know, whatever, whatever the daughter of earth, where the North node is, where the dot, when the daughter of earth was born, um, that is the frequency that, that she needs to follow. And through following that frequency, she will hopefully the transition will be more peaceful and less stressful. Uh, any of these transits, the level of stress that you're feeling from them is, I find, typically equatable to how much you're following your north node or not. Okay. So the more stress you're feeling, the more you're probably on the wrong end of your nodes, and that's the planets like really screaming at you to adjust your energy, adjust your holding- frequency. You're holding on to that south node energy, which is totally, you know, not being able to let go of the past. Well, and what you're comfortable with, what mm-hmm. you what you know, the south node is is what you um, what you came into this life with. But the cancer energy of her moon, that is the past. So maybe there's something from the past that she needs to release mm-hmm. in order to ascend to the highest point of her achievement, her goals. So what is it from her past that she needs to release? That's a good question. I love that. All right. We have Nicolette Daskalakis. Daskalakis? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, She wants to know what is the significance or impact of having your chart dominated by a specific sign? I'm a Capricorn sun, but I also have my Mars, Mercury, Uranus, Neptune, Lilith, and North Node all in Capricorn. Wow. Wow, Nicolette. Capricorn baby. Super Capricorn, super, super Capricorn here. That's a lot of planets in Capricorn, you know, but the North Node is in Capricorn too. So, I mean, that to me, it feels like a gift because there's so much energy directing her towards her soul's purpose, which Mm -hmm. is to achieve. You know, Nicolette needs to set goals and commit to doing the work required to accomplish and achieve those goals and needs to acknowledge that her success is up to her. She's the only one that can climb the mountain that she wants to climb. I mean, other people can climb it, but it wouldn't be her climbing it. Mm -hmm. In order for her to get to the top of the mountain, she needs to climb the mountain. So Nicolette, I encourage you to really focus on your goals, your aspirations, what you want to accomplish and achieve, 
set those clearly and wake up every day and climb a little bit towards that goal. Maybe have goals for each day, goals for each week, goals for each month, goals for each year. And climb, 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 work, 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 focus on that energy. But the significance and impact of having a chart dominated by a significant sign or a specific sign, that is, that's a major theme. If, if you have a lot of planets in a single sign, a stellium, which is three or more planets in a sign or three or more planets in a house, that's an area of focus in your life. And, and you Nicolette's one, focus, two, three, yeah. Seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven symbols in Capricorn. I mean, that's so, so cool. I mean, I think I would think maybe she already might have some sort of achievement or success as a th- as a theme that is ongoing in her life and probably easier to act, possibly easier to access than most since all of her energy think- is. Yes, but that? we need to know the rest of the chart and the South Node is very powerful. Yeah. You know, it still draws you to to that old frequency. So I mean, I you guess know, your north node be... or your north node and your south node can never be in the same sign. So they're opposite. So they're always gonna be that pulled. Even if you have everything in one sign, there's no way for the, the south node to also be there. Right. Well if okay. it, yeah, the south node's gonna be in Cancer, the north node's in Capricorn. So yeah, Nicolette may have this urge to to be very emotional and wanting to be in the home and those sorts of things, uh, which are really like the nurturer. Not, yeah, being the nurturer, being kind and caring. She needs to really, you know, develop that stiff upper lip and say, I'm going to do it. Nothing's going to stop me. Needs to leave the house, not stay home all day. Um, unless, you know, she's working from home all the time, but yeah, that's the, the Capricorn focus, get out and climb. And then I have another question from Nisekats. Okay. My birthday is, uh, July 7th, 1979. My son is in cancer, moon Capricorn, rising cancer, going by my birth time at 5 AM in Thailand, but I've lived in the U S is this correct? Or should I convert it to Eastern standard time? Okay, so you you want your birth time to be exactly where you were born, not where you live now. Well, I mean, when you put it into any of the applications that spit out your birth chart, it asks you where you were born. So it would be, you'd have to also now change your birthplace, but you can't change your birthplace. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It has to be the the place you were born and the time you were born in that place. Exactly. It's where did you arrive on planet Earth? Mm -hmm. It's a screenshot, basically. if you of, it, yeah it's it's a snapshot of where the planets and stars were at at the moment you arrived in the place that you arrived on planet earth so if you were born in thailand um but you've lived in the us your whole life you still arrived in thailand mm-hmm. so that is where the planets and stars were when you were born they weren't from some place in the us where you weren't when you were born if that makes sense know. hopefully i think it does yeah. i think it's pretty clear um, and then shall we move into the week? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. Okay. So oh, and then this also if is you, the week, yeah. Oh, and before we go into the week, if you do have any questions mm-hmm. you want to write us, we yeah. answer questions on the podcast. When you write them into the Spotify app, there is a Q&A tab. You can write your questions there. Otherwise, if you're asking, we're answering the questions wherever you're asking them. So if it's on YouTube, we answer them on YouTube. If it's on Instagram, we answer them on Instagram. If you write it into Spotify, we will answer it here on the podcast for you. Awesome. Thanks, Ingrid. So this is the week of April 17th to the 23rd. We are looking first here at Monday, April 17th. And this is an alignment that I I should have uh, mentioned last week because it really began last week around, it began on April 14th. But, you know, this Saturn in Pisces energy, I am uh, extra spacey these days. I don't know if anyone else out there is feeling that way, but I am certainly extra spacey. The, The dream has become more real. It's hard to discern between 
fantasy and reality, but we are looking at Saturn, the planet of restriction, responsibility, hard work, achievement, and authority in the mutable water sign symbolized by the fish, Pisces, forming a positive sextile with the North Node, the karmic pathway of the soul, and soul's purpose in the fixed earth sign symbolized by the bull Taurus. So this is an alignment that we're going to be talking about all week because this alignment is occurring with both Saturn and the North Node at four degrees in their respective signs, Pisces for Saturn, Taurus for the North Node. This began, as I just said, on April 14th and continues until April 25th. So this is... This is a really special alignment that it's it's allowing you to manifest your dreams. It's supporting you in manifesting your dreams, really looking at the status of your self-worth, what you value, and how that's reflected within your unconscious, taking a hard look at your unconscious, facing the guilt, the shame, the regret, the blame, and doing the hard work that it may take to show yourself compassion so that you can integrate those thought patterns and memories with understanding, forgiveness, and love, and then tying that in to your self-worth and what you value. This is a time to elevate your self-worth and what you value, and you're able to do that by showing yourself compassion. That, like Ingrid was saying earlier in the show, I was so embarrassed. I hate when I'm sounding that way on the podcast and I was just going off. And but it's like you're a human being. We're we're all human beings. Like we have a whole wide range of emotions. And you think of that Instagram society where everybody's living their best life 24-7. <laughs> you know, I'm just, you know, always on a beach. And and looking beautiful every single day because that's just my life because I'm spiritually enlightened and and I'm positive. That's so much fucking bullshit. I mean, my God, every single person deals with pain and suffering and and anger. It's a normal human emotion. So we have to face these parts of ourselves and integrate the shadow rather than avoid the shadow. The more you avoid it, the more it will haunt you. It's true. Yeah, it's eventually going to come out in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I just think of like, you know, and <laughs> I don't even want to really want to go down this path because, you know, I know a lot of people think that it was staged or whatever, and maybe it was staged, maybe it wasn't staged. But like, when you think of like the Will Smith slap of Chris Rock, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, what? Whoa, wait, this is the biggest moment of his, his career as an actor. He's nominated for best actor and he just snapped. It's like, there's something going on beneath the surface there that is very painful that wasn't being acknowledged and it came out on the biggest stage, whether people want to believe that it was real or fake or whatever. I don't know, but, um, it's mean, still a good example either way. Like the idea of something eventually coming out because you've pushed it down and you know, something else might set you off. Exactly. You Even the guy at the club, obviously he was just literally sitting in there and the guy was like, Oh, you're actually in the walkway. Everyone has to walk through here to get the dances. So if you could just scoot your chair in, and, and what that did set you do? him off. What did you do? I, it just started. It just started a big ass argument. Then they were mm -hmm. pushing, and sh I just turned insane over literally nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I looked at Will Smith's transits on that day, and they were tense. Mm -hmm. You know, so who knows? But I think of the person at the club who snaps over somebody asking him to <laughs> to move out of the way so that the dancers can walk through. And he just snaps like something was squaring something in his chart and he hadn't been integrating the shadow and just lost his shit. So I'm also thinking mm -hmm. here on this day or I guess this transit period, mm -hmm. um, I've been wanting to, you know, do a lot of things. I have all of these dreams, so many ideas for businesses. Like that's just like m my hobby is collecting business 
concepts that I can never finish because I have too many unfinished projects. And I was like, I want to go to this dinner for research on... And my friend was like, stop. You don't need to go to this dinner to research food. Like, that's ridiculous. He's like, you can Mm. go to that dinner if you want, but you need to stop researching things and you need to finish. Just put Mm. it out there. Even if it's not perfect, you need to just put it out there. Anything you do is going to be great and then you're also going to have things you don't like about it so just stop standing in your own way you're not allowing yourself to bring your dreams into reality because you're 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 blocking yourself so i feel like that kind of resonated with me here where i'm like oh i just need to bring my dreams into reality just do it do the thing stop thinking about it and dreaming about it and fantasizing about it and actually just do the thing Mm -hmm. this is such a great point especially for the Virgo people like you, you know, I mean, the Saturn energy in Pisces, Pisces is the sign that's opposite Virgo. So Virgo is the critical conscious mind and Pisces is the compassionate unconscious mind. So Saturn moving through Pisces is really hopefully maybe in an uncomfortable way, but ultimately a helpful way, watering the rigidity of the virgo earth that says well i can't do it until i do all these other things and then oh wait there's (laughs) all these other things i need to do and just constantly teetling and nitpicking until to no end to never finish something and that's that's it for me i'm okay i'm looking ahead to tuesday which is the same let's go to tuesday let's go to tuesday but then with some added tension of this type of an energy. Yes. So Tuesday, April 18th, we've got Saturn sextile the North node again, but then there's the moon, the planet of emotions in the cardinal fire sign symbolized by the Ram and ruled by Mars, Aries squaring off with Mars, the God of war, the planet of action, aggression, and conflict in the cardinal water sign symbolized by the crab and ruled by the moon cancer. So Mars is transiting through the sign that the moon rules and the moon is transiting through the sign that Mars rules and they're squaring off with each other. It's like two people that are pissed off that the other person's broken into their house. You know, it's like they both broken into each other's houses (laughs) and they're angry that (laughs) you fucking broke into my house. Well, you broke into my house. What? You broke into my house first. So, you know, this is, there's some real tension here where there could be some explosive, explosive energy. But and the explosions. I'm kind of it, yeah. Well, I'm kind me. of thinking of it like yeah. internally where you're fighting with yourself. You want to like, you want to take this action to move ahead, but it's like in conflict with your emotions. Like you need to move ahead, but you can't move ahead or something. Uh, I totally. Totally. I mean, that very well could be something that you're experiencing within yourself. You know, the cancer energy is water. It's introverted. It represents the past, your roots, your upbringing, your childhood, the ones who raised and nurtured you and your ancestors. So Mars transiting through, transiting through, through cancer from March 25th to May 20th is churning up your past. And causing you to look at your past. It may be, it may be creating conflicts in your home life. And those conflicts are coming about for you to reflect upon your past. And then the moon comes through in Aries and just brings all that heat, all that fire to the emotions. And there could be some big explosions. Maybe they're internally, maybe they're externally as well once you blow up within yourself who knows but uh this is definitely a time to ask yourself why am i so angry where does this anger stem from when was the first time i got annoyed by this situation or a situation like this when was the last time i was annoyed in a situation like this the first time the last time this time what is the connection between them all can i be authentic in expressing myself in my home. Okay, so on Tuesday, April 18th, I believe my friend, I believe this is his last day at his job, and he's going to be leaving it to pursue art and food, and I'm doing a food project with him. So I feel like this interesting conflict here, because he likes things to stay the same, as do I. Mm. And then 
when I look ahead to Wednesday, it's like Tuesday might be really scary and uncomfortable Mm -hmm. conflict internally. And then I'll let you go into Wednesday and how maybe that can... So Wednesday, again, Saturn still sextile the North Node, and then the Sun and the Moon conjunct in Aries. So this is the second new Moon in Aries. The first new Moon in Aries was on March 25th. Today, Wednesday, April 19th, is the second new Moon in Aries. This is the first time since 2004 that there's been two new Moons in Aries. And this is a period of redefining who you are, of being authentic, setting your intentions to be authentic. And of course, if you want to learn how this alignment is affecting you directly, I encourage you to go to theweeklytransit.com and enroll in my moon cycle classes. But this new moon occurs at 9.13 p.m. Pacific time. That is the time to set your intentions I think of the correlation between this year and 2004. Like what is similar to your life right now that you're experiencing to what you were experiencing in 2004? What's the theme? What's the thread? You know, just in terms of a global a global sort of understanding or connection, 2004 was a two or three and a half years after 9-11. Here we are two and a half years after, or three years after COVID. So it's three and a half years after 9-11, there's three years after COVID. Those are two periods in time where you can literally say, this was what life was like before 9-11. This is what life was like after 9-11. This is what life was like before COVID. This is what life was like after COVID. So we collectively on planet earth have experienced this trauma And now there is, this is the time to redefine who you are in the new world. So set your intentions to love yourself, to be courageous in that expression of love for yourself, to set your intentions to be confident in who you are. I think all of these are just the best things. And also just Mm. thinking of my friend quitting his job it's like okay now the next day you're like yeah i give a shit about myself i need to be courageous i need to set my intentions for how i want to show up authentically and you know the decision from the past was an authentic decision to quit this job to pursue his dreams Mm -hmm. and now we have to be yes set our intentions for the future like what's actually going to happen in the future i just know i don't want to continue on this path but now we have to set intentions for how this new path is going to go for us that's so wild when in 2004 I quit my job. Really? My corporate job to follow my dreams, to be a writer. And boy, that was like the hardest year of my life. I thought I had a like a restaurant job lined up and then it fell through and I was basically unemployed for like 16 months just desperately trying to find a job. It was Fuck. So, you know, it's uh it is a good time, I think, though, to take that risk, to to find yourself, to be yourself, to be authentically you. And I thought I was being authentically myself, even though I had no idea what was going on with the planets and stars at that time. But, um, you know, I was like, this is who I am. I'm a writer. And then I went out there in the world and was doing the writing thing. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not a writer. This is not working for me the way that it should be. Um, so... Oh, I think maybe you help people rewrite their own story. Oh, yeah. Well, everything that I did in the past, acting, writing, art. I mean, how do you think I I drew all of this stuff right here? You know, I when I was in elementary school and junior high, I would get taken out of school every Thursday afternoon was art gate. I had like the special class with, with uh, three other people. They would take us out of class and we had our own special art teacher who would, who would teach us art. So like I've been an artist my whole life. I have done acting since I was in, I think I took my first acting class when I was like in seventh or eighth grade. 
and and then the writing too you know of course i'm not professional as an artist or a writer or an actor but everything that i learned through those experiences has helped me be a better astrologer in communicating the knowledge of the planets and stars to everyone even when i think about acting like a lot of the times when i'm going through something you'll do a role play with me mhm totally and it's very powerful to be able to access that and that's that's the work that i do with my clients and you know especially the cosmic pathway clients but the the clients that i meet with say if like you contact me for like a natal chart reading i'm looking at that as like i'm telling a story and i'm telling the story of you yeah and so there's a beginning <laughs> cool. a middle and end there's a climax <laughs> You know, just like like you're watching a movie, but it's your story, and so yeah, that's how I that's how I do my work. Maybe on like a smaller scale. So now I'm looking at Thursday, mm -hmm. and just this like very like short timeline of the transition of how these things all work together is yeah. really what do you, special. Yeah. What do you see here? So well, the now sun. The the sun and the north node are both in Taurus. Yes, so the sun begins transit in Taurus today, Thursday, April 20th. So right after that new moon in Aries, where this is the second time where we are being given this opportunity to establish who you are authentically, now the sun moves into Taurus where it joins the north node and this is this is about self-worth and what you value in order to in order to truly what should I say in, in order to truly know your self-worth, you have to love yourself. If you don't love yourself, then then the self-worth is is going to be low. So it's about understanding who you are. And when you're understanding who you are, then you know what you want. You know what your worth is. And so the sun in Taurus is that opportunity to really establish and secure your self-worth and what you value. Reaffirm those boundaries that you've created in the Aries season Aries is ruled by Mars. It's about, you know, keeping people at arm's distance. This is my space right here. Don't cross that line. You cross that line. It's a fight. Whereas Taurus, all of a sudden we become more chill because well, the bull's we, just like, you're not going to mess with me. Yeah, I'm we don't bull. need to have such strong boundaries because we're not going to move. Someone's not going to move us. We don't have to worry about them violating us. We're like, I'm here and this is where I'm going to be. No one's going to shift me accidentally like i know what i want and i'm doing what i need to do to fulfill my soul's purpose so yeah it's like the aries energy is establishing the boundary but the taurus energy is like the boundaries here it's clearly here and i mean if I, somebody i'm but, sorry it feels yeah. <laughs> i can't no, believe i keep interrupting today um just thinking like maybe first you have to establish boundaries outside of yourself to be able to have boundaries with yourself. And now mm. that you've established that you actually have those boundaries for yourself. So you don't need to like, I don't know, put them out outside of yourself. If that makes any sense, you're, you just like, you know yourself more and you don't have to worry about someone like shifting your energy. Mm. Cause it's just not possible. Right. I like that. Yes. Cause you're very clear about your values, your self-worth. Mm -hmm. People can say you're trash and you're like, okay, if that's what you think, you know what yeah, I mean? It's fine, like, <laughs> whatever you say. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you I know, mean I'm thinking of my friend quitting his job to like do more art stuff. It feels very distracting for him and depleting for him to do this other job. But, you know, maybe once he's into all the way integrated into himself where we, he has his own routine and nothing can shift that maybe he can do other things outside of that but he's always going to have his priorities right because he's like built that for himself mm. it's now ingrained in him yes this is the foundation this is mm. you know the the foundation has been set now dude it's solidifying is... but i just want to say before you move on i Sorry. know you're jumping ahead <laughs> but i just want to say that 
that uh, the sun is in Taurus from April 20th to May 21st. And it's, it's in Taurus from this time every year. I mean, sometimes it moves to Gemini on May 20th. Sometimes on May 21st, depends on what time and where you are in the world. But this year, at least on the West Coast in California, the sun is in Taurus from April 20th to May 21st. So this could be a challenging period for those with key astrological points and planets in Leo and Aquarius, because Leo and Aquarius are both fixed like Taurus, but they are in fire and air, which does not vibe with the earth of Taurus. So if you have key astrological points and planets, and I'm not just talking about the sun, there could be challenges during this period that are calling you to really reevaluate your self-worth, what you value, and ground yourself into reality. Okay, Ingrid, let's move on to Friday. So this week, every single alignment is also just tagged on to this Mm-hmm. North Node in Taurus and Saturn in Pisces energy. Exactly. Which feels, it feels very focused. Yes. And it's about values and your unconscious and your self-worth. And if that self-worth is feeling low because you're blaming yourself, you're feeling guilt, shame, or regret for something that you've done. So you're punishing yourself in some way. Mm-hmm. This is meant to be healing healing you and re reaffirming that you have value on this planet. You are here for a reason and you are a unique divine individual that has values that vibes with some people and other people it doesn't and so on and so forth. But we're all reflecting each other in the way that we need to, in order to have the clarity of who we are as individuals. And so this is joined by Mercury the messenger of the gods, guide of souls to the underworld, the planet of consciousness, communication, and coordination in Taurus at 15 degrees. This is red. This 15 degrees. Yes, it's retrograde time. It's Mercury retrograde. So the Mercury is retrograde from now until May 15th, from April 21st to May 15th. It moved into its shadow. As you know, if you've been listening to the podcast back on April 7th is when it moved into its retrograde shadow. It moves out of its retrograde shadow on May 31st. So this is about bringing your mental focus and attention on your self-worth and what you value on your likes and dislikes. Why do I like this? Why don't I like that? Does it have to do with someone else or is it my own personal Yes, decision that. about what I, yes exactly and so that it's like you i'm wearing these clothes because this celebrity wears those clothes or or the popular person at school wears those clothes or this person or that person that i look at no i wear these clothes because they're comfortable to me they feel mm-hmm. good to me mm-hmm. so this is about really keying in on what you like and what you don't like separate from other people And so some things to think about here are money. How are you making money? How are you spending money? Is what you're doing to make money, do you value that? Is what you're spending your money on, do you value that? Or are you spending money in certain areas because you don't value your work it's like it's like somebody who might make a lot of money like wow this person's rich look at they must their life must be so perfect because they're rich but they hate what they do and so they buy a bunch of stuff that they don't care about yeah because they yeah. don't value their work their time and they also don't value where they're spending their money so this is where the energy is focused right now and then as soon as you bring up retrograde, everyone gets really scared. Everything's going to fall apart. But like one of the gifts of the retrograde is to re it's all about re revisiting Mm -hmm. these themes and re checking in on yourself and Mm -hmm. our values change sometimes. So sometimes we have to actually stop and think about how we've changed. And if what we're doing is actually matching what is in alignment with us. 
Maybe mm-hmm. we're spending money on things like you said they don't actually make us happy anymore. It was just a routine. It's like, okay, well, wait. Maybe I didn't even notice. Maybe it was just a habit from an old partner or like that's what all my friends are doing. And you're like, wait, that doesn't even make me happy. Mm-hmm. If I was spending more time on, I mean, for myself personally, if I was spending more time cooking or spending more money on food, like that would make me happy. If I'm spending money on drinking, that's literally, that doesn't do anything good for me. So, you know, something for my home or just, yeah, anything that actually fills me up and taking, taking stock of what that is for me personally. Yeah. Love it. You know, this is, you want, you want to really slow down during this period. Yeah. Like you said, reflect, review, reassess, but slow down Mm -hmm. and take your time, especially if you're making any financial decisions. You probably don't want to be making any major financial decisions during this period unless it's something that you've already been contemplating prior to the retrograde or the retrograde shadow. So the shadow began on April 7th. The retrograde is today, the 21st. So if you're getting some sort of spontaneous hit to spend money somewhere or uh, make some sort of financial investment unexpectedly that is just kind of out of the blue between now and May 15th or even May 31st, pump the brakes. Slow down. I mean, Don't that's rush. definitely good. That's a good advice. Yeah, unless you've already been planning on buying, making that purchase, we can all get very excited about you know something new and shiny that's going to fulfill us that's not even in alignment with what we should be spending our money on we're like wait how the fuck did this happen exactly and then by the end of the retrograde you're throwing away whatever you bought or your investment tanks you know it's just take your time here take your time don't rush into anything april 22nd saturday we've got saturn and the North Node again, and then the Moon joining the party at four degrees in Gemini squaring Saturn. So that's going to bring some discomfort where maybe you're needing to have some communication or conversation on an emotional level. What questions do you need to ask those that you are emotionally tied to in order to alleviate some of your psychological baggage. Maybe you've been blaming yourself or feeling guilty over something that the people that you think are blaming you or wanting you to feel guilty, they've totally forgotten about it. They don't even remember what you're talking Like, what? Wait, you did when? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, okay, that's not a big deal. I didn't mind that. So what are the hard questions that you need to ask, that you want to ask? The hard questions questions i mean this do you think this is always going to be asking these questions to someone else or are we being curious about maybe it's about maybe yourself too exactly i think it's like you know we always bring this up i feel like when it's there's a connection between gemini and pisces it's like gemini is the facts and pisces is the intuition and so, also that's a, that can also be the fantasies that we've dreamed up in our minds that aren't even based, like you said, in reality, the person's like, I'm not even, I don't even remember that happening. I moved on and I don't care. And you're over totally. there worried that I'm still mad or something like, no, mm-hmm. you should have just it, asked me a week ago. And I would have said, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> and and so just, you have this sort of fantasy that you've made up in your head. It could be in a personal relationship. It could be, you know, what you're seeing out there in the world you don't know if it's real. You need to ask the questions to gather the information, to get the facts before you just rely upon the intuition to say, well, that's what I felt. So that must be true. Yeah, we can it get might lost. be true, but yeah, we can get lost in those fantasies. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. you could be having a hit on something or it could be for something else. And if you're not actually asking the question, then how are you, how do you even know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So be willing to ask those difficult questions to yourself and to those that you're connected to emotionally. On Sunday, April 23rd, Mercury back in the picture and Mars forming the sextile along with Saturn and the North Node. So ending the week, hopefully on a positive note, 
where we are, we have the courage to have the conversations that we need to have, to put them into action, to create the home life that you desire, uh, where you feel valued. And I mean, that's basically the big question is, you know, where do your values stem from? Where, what's at the root of your self-worth? Whether you have great self-confidence or low self-esteem, what's at the root of that? And and really taking that look, initiating conversations with those that that you're connected to emotionally or that you trust or people from your past in order to bring you the clarity that you need that will hopefully clear up some of that psychological baggage again and recenter you in a good positive place of, of who you are. I'm also thinking that this, this sextile is we're, we're able to take action in whatever we're like thinking that, whatever we have learned about ourselves by asking these questions yesterday. And now we're able to take action on them. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You've gotten that new information and now you're able to move forward to secure your self-worth, secure what you want. Yes. Uh, Cause yesterday yes. might've felt scary. It was like uncomfortable to ask these questions and have whatever comes up in your mind, the answers to them maybe weren't what you were expecting. And that was, mm -hmm uncomfortable to have a shift and learn what was whatever was you know lingering in your psychological baggage but now today you're like oh i needed to find that out so i can like move forward and do good shit i think also like i think you'll like this because when i think of taurus and cancer like those are two of the signs that i look at is like ruling food because cancer is the home and the kitchen's in the home and taurus is about the five physical senses. Yeah. So this may be a good day to connect with family or close friends and really come together in, ter in terms of, you know, making a great meal that everybody enjoys. Um, so my grandma, she passed away a couple of years ago now, but we're having a big memorial with, you know, people all over the country are coming yeah. and her service is on Saturday. Wait, her service is on Saturday, and then on Sunday, we're having a brunch at my mom's house. Perfect. Right? Great alignment for you. I love that. A little gathering. and Yes. I get to share the things we love, like food with the people we care about. Yes. Amazing. Divine timing. <laughs> I love it. Love it, Ingrid. Awesome. <sighs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott, for all of your insight. You're welcome. And if anyone wants to support the podcast, go subscribe to our YouTube channel, go buy the basics of astrology, the book that came out, go get a moon cycle reading, share it, all the things. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Ingrid. Okay. I'll see you next week, Scott. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the weekly transit. Follow us on Instagram for daily updates about the planetary alignments and how to work with the energy. If this podcast is helping you navigate life more gracefully, please subscribe, rate us five stars and share with your friends. If you're ready to go deeper, book a personal reading with Scott or sign up for his new moon full moon class at theweeklytransit.com. Transit, 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 transit.